the next step, we want to reinforce the wooted side beams. Here we will learn about creating reinforcement with variable segment lengths. To create rebar in components that are not cut by the current view, the placement plane can be changed to near cover reference. We will place the stirrup perpendicular to the cover with a spacing of 150 millimeters. Let's place it and adjust the rebar set length as usual by using the shape handles. The stirrups should have varying heights based on the top edge of the beam. For this, we activate the varying rebar set option. It is now possible to set the constraints of, on targets that are not parallel or orthogonal to the distribution direction. Since our constraint target is a component, we can use this icon to switch the constraint from the outer edge to the concrete cover. Observe the orange line and remember when the constraint target was another rebar, the options offered at this point were bar axis and clear spacing. Variable rebar sets can be annotated and detailed using the familiar tools. When creating a rebar shape detail, a table is now generated listing the individual segment lengths of the submarks. The maximum and minimum segment lengths are displayed at, at the detail and the bar length in the annotation refers to the mean value. By the way, shape details can be mirrored using these small arrows that you will see now. While rotating, make sure that the disjoin option in the option bar is disabled. Let's move the stirrup up a little bit here and the annotation down. And we are done. For the longitudinal bars, we again use the option by two points. However, this time we draw the rebars parallel to work plane. Let's start at the bottom edge, move to the right side, then to the top edge, left click and right click. And by the way, by using the object snap in Revit, the small parallel icon consisting of two vertical lines, we can easily place the rebars parallel to the top edge. All right, let's switch to section two and adjust the rebar set length of the stirrup using the shape handles or constraints. Here's a helpful tip. You can use the arrow keys to adjust the rebar set in small increments to the desired position. We repeat the same on the bottom. The arrow key a bit up to the left and done. Now let's change the layout rule. I forgot that we want to set a fixed number of only two rebars for the upper and the lower rebar set. We select the diameter of 12 mm for the top and 16 for the bottom rebar set. Now I need to readjust here a little bit. I'll use the arrow keys again and I would say it's great that everything in Revit can be easily modified at any time. The lateral rebars can be added as seen in the previous video.
As I copy the rebar to the second beam, I'd like to elaborate a little bit about the rebar host. We select our beam and start the propagate rebar tool and all the rebar sets of the selected host are selected. You can see that the upper longitudinal bars are not included because they were automatically assigned to the slab where we placed them. By the way, this also explains why the rebars were distributed over the entire width of the slab during input. We select the top two upper layer rebars and using the select host tool, the host can be found and checked quickly. Now with the select host tool, I can change the host and select our beam. At this point, we accept the message that there are two rebars that are located outside of the beam. Once again, propagate the, re the reinforcement. Now all the desired bars are included and we can select our target next. By the way, all dependencies of the individual rebar sets are taken into account and transferred accordingly. Let's go back to section 3 and take a look at the table which was automatically updated. We can see now that there are two bars for each subsegment. Let's return to the overview now. As an exercise, I encourage you to independently develop this reinforcement sheet using the annotation and detailing commands you have already learned.